We're picking up our study on figures in the Bible, and this week we're going to be studying Rahab. And we'll be first reading from the book of Joshua, the second chapter, beginning with verse 1. And it reads, And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And a woman took the two men and hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not where they were. And it came to pass, about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out, whither the men went, I went not, pursued after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them, with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords, and as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came unto them upon the roof, and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of the Jordan, Zion and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man, because for you, and hear this part, for the Lord your God, he is God, in heaven above and in earth beneath. And now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shewed you kindness, that you also shew kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And the man answered her, Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business, and it shall be, when the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. And she let them down by a cord through the window. For the house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And I'm going to jump down to 18. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt find this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and thy father's household home unto thee. May the Lord add a blessing for the reading of his precious word. So what this story is about is Israel is is entered into the promised land and the Lord is delivering Jericho into the hands of the Israelites. And the Lord sends in the spies to check out the land. And it so happens that as they came in to spy that they fell and landed into this harlot's house who secretly hid them. The thing about Rahab the harlot is she recognized two things. She recognized the true and only one God, which we read, that your God is God, because look how he's delivered you out of the bondage of Egypt, and look what he's done for you. And I believe in that. And there's so much to this story. But we want to back up a minute in the sense that Everyone knows that when you start talking about a harlot, and you can have men harlots as well as women harlots, that they are depicted as a low class. 
in society for the most part. And they have a figment on them as far as the, how they are viewed by society. But I want to remind you that God's ways are not our ways. He doesn't see things the way we see things. For he's no respecter of persons. We're all sinners saved by grace if we're going to be honest with one another. <laughs> and he's not going to favor this person because of the money they have or how much money they give or or how this one dress, or the business this one has, or the place where this one is from. He looks at the heart. And he looks at whether there's faith, because you can't please God without faith. Now, take in mind that these people were not Israelites. And please bear with me, because I'm just getting over a cold. These were Gentiles. And this was shortly after they'd come out of the desert and crossed the Jordan. And all the way back there, we see God already setting the stage for salvation for the Gentile through this harlot. Because as you read this scripture, you read about a scarlet thread. <coughs> Excuse me. And it sounds very insignificant. But if anyone who studied the Word knows when you're reading God's Word, things just aren't thrown in there for any good reason. Why wasn't it a blue thread? Why wasn't it a green thread? Why a scarlet thread? Because there's a reason for it. And when you study the Word, you're going to find that there's another place in the Bible that uses a scarlet thread. And that comes from Tamar, which was Judah's daughter-in-law in Genesis 38, 28, if you want to read about that. And if you want to tie it all together, you can read Numbers 19 about the red heifer. And when you start to read about these different aspects <coughs> of the scarlet thread in the red heifer. You see God setting the stage for salvation for the stranger and for the gentle. Because when you read about the red heifer, you read about a sacrifice that takes place outside of the walls of the city for the stranger. And these are strangers that adopt the God of Israel. They want to be a part of Israel, but they're not Jews. And they are embraced. Just like the Gentile was grafted in to the blessings that were all given to Israel, including salvation. <coughs> so, we see this scarlet thread. We read about the red heifer who is a a female cow who has not become pregnant. And you notice that Rahab says, my father, my mother, my brother, my sisters. And God uses a harlot who recognizes him in faith. No respecter of persons. We can go down the road, there's people like Ruth, who was a Moabite woman, who actually found herself embracing the God of Israel, who actually became part of the bloodline of Jesus through Boaz. Again, so many times we may think that our lives are so insignificant. Because of where we live, or where we're from, or what we've done, or the lifestyles that we had, in the past that <coughs> you know the enemy wants to make us feel like we're the bottom of the barrel that there's no use for us <coughs> in his house or in his world and nothing could be further from the truth 
that you are as significant as any one of these figures in the Bible. Because wasn't it true when they brought the harlot to Jesus who was caught in the very act? What did he say to her? Well, first he looked at everyone that was accusing her and said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. <coughs> and they all walked away. Because they knew the truth that they too were sinners. And then he looked at her and said, go and sin no more. Picked her right up, embraced her, a harlot. We see another harlot in, in Tamar, which was Judah's daughter-in-law, who wanted a baby so bad that she dressed up like a harlot and had sex with her father-in-law. And when you read that story, that we gave you in Genesis, she was having twins and the first baby stuck his finger out and they tied a scarlet thread on the finger to identify who the firstborn was. <coughs> Why a scarlet thread? Why a harlot? Why a gentle? Because she also was a gentle. So as we start to look at these different characters within the Bible, you have to begin to start to look at yourself. Because didn't Paul say that you are also a written epistle? What is God doing in your life right now? You may think you're behind the walls of Jericho as a harlot, wondering what you're going to do with your family. And God's knocking on your door. <coughs> And all he's looking for from you is faith. That woman had faith in the God of Israel. Faith that when they were coming to, to take over Jericho, she was hanging out the thread. That was the sign. And when you read the whole story, they saw it, they came, her whole house was saved. Again, your faith, no matter where you come from, no respect of persons, when you step into that grace and you receive Christ, not just you, but your house, there's a favor that goes out from you as you step into that favor of God, into that faith of God, and believe in him in seriousness. She wasn't playing games. I'm not talking about someone who's trying to be funny. No, she was serious. She says, I recognize something here. I recognize the God of Israel, and I believe regardless of what all these other people say. And God honored her. Regardless of where she came from. Regardless of what she did. Regardless of what her activities were about. <coughs> he accepted that connotation of her faith in him. He saved her whole house. He can do the same thing for you. Because he's no respecter of persons. You can read in James 2.25. Likewise also was not Rahab. We're talking about her all the way in James now in the New Testament. The harlot justified by works. When she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. And I want you also Colossians 3.25 I'm sorry, Hebrews 11.31. <clears throat> By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And Colossians 3.25 
But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. So don't let the enemy lie to you and say, oh, he'll never bless me because of, I can never be set free because of, there's no respect of persons. What he looks at is a contrite heart. He looks at the heart just like he looked at Rahab's heart and he saw the contriteness, the seriousness, and her faith in him, and he acted upon it. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Lord, help us to receive what you would have for each of us. Help us not to be intimidated by the things around us, Lord but to respect and realize that you want such one wonderment and, and goodness for each and every one of us. And Lord, we're not hindered by what is happening in our neighborhoods or around us, what matters is what's in our heart. Because just as he delivered Rahab out of that city that was going to be destroyed and overrun, just like he saved the harlot who was caught in the act from being stoned, so he can reach into every one of our lives as sinners and save us from whatever it is that's trying to destroy us. <clears throat> Maybe you have a, a drug habit that's trying to destroy you. Maybe you have a disease that's trying to take your life. Whatever the, your ills may be, God can save you from that. Trust him and, and look to him and, and talk to him because he loves you. Claim what is yours because as Jesus died on the cross, there's the scarlet thread. It all goes back to the cross. His red blood. The mirror of that was the red heifer in the Old Testament. The grafting in of the Gentiles through Tamar and Rahab and Ruth for you. That you could be set free, free through the blood of Jesus. No matter where you come from if we'll but receive it by faith, to step into it, to seek it, to find it, and receive it. For we ask all these things, Father. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen.